I'm gonna film a favorites video. I posted a favorites video like two years ago. It was in my old apartment and uh, I never filmed another one. Well, I wrote down many a list of things that I'd really been enjoying throughout the months, but never got around to sitting down to film one because the time just flew by. So I do want to make this a more monthly thing or routine thing because I really do enjoy, um, I love watching favorites videos. It's just kind of like chit chatting about things that you've been enjoying products, television activities. And that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to tell you some things that I really enjoy throughout the month of September. So first, I'm gonna start off with some activities or in-person things to do. Uh, we started off the month by going up to Vancouver and swimming with some seals, and oh my goodness, can I not rave about that experience. Oh, I I filmed a whole video about that day. Um, I will link that up here. Um, we had these flotation suits on and we got on a boat and they sailed us out in the house sound, which is a beautiful, beautiful body of water. It's like fjorks. There are mountains that are thousands and thousands of feet high and then the waters are hundreds and thousands of feet deep. Um, stunning landscape. Um, I'd love to go there again. You see people like camping on top of like the mountain cliffs and whatnot and I just, oh, I wanna do that so bad. Beautiful landscape. Um, and so with the flotation device that kept you warm and that kept you floating so you didn't have to be swimming and spending all of that energy um, and you just got to snorkel and get really up close and personal with the seals, of course, to like a, a respectable degree. I guess saying like up and close is a little like, ugh. As you can see in my video, like I got this wonderful experience of hanging out with a seal for about two minutes. Um, it came up and sniffed the GoPro. I think these seals along this area are used to people coming in and the instructor also tells you to not block um, a sea cave that they have. They will become aggressive. We did see some seals becoming aggressive. They would splash, whether that be because we were close to them or they were splashing each other. Like some of them were just aggressive towards other seals. And so of course you want to kind of like stay away from that. You are in open water. So my understanding is that the seal would swim away faster than it would attack you. And again, I wasn't getting all up in their faces. Um, I was really trying to allow them to approach me and whatnot. <laughs> Give a good, you know, five feet, six feet distance from them so they didn't feel trapped. We swam into their, we swam near their colony. And that's when we actually were in the water with an instructor who had like a little floating flotation device saying like, don't pass this line. We didn't get up and close and personal to them because that was their house. So, you know, their, their land, that is their territory. So we were kind of really trying to be kind guests in the territory. Um, but I, I, just so wonderful. I, these, they say that the seals are very curious and I got some on the GoPro and they say that some of the seals eat, you know, eat the GoPro, sniff the GoPro cameras and whatnot and are really curious. Um, just, just an endlessly wonderful experience. Like I, I, I keep telling my family like, come up and we'll go, like we'll go again. Like it was so wonderful. Um, and the fact that it was like a, a, an early birthday surprise was even like a cherry on top of that. Another thing that I did this month that was, oh, fantismo. Uh, my friend Brittany, who's been on my channel uh, dozens of times, she had found and been wanting to go to a Thai, a vegan, Thai restaurant that has a lunch buffet for the longest time. It's in the U district. And I think it was like 10 or $13 a head. Like it's, it's like the average price of getting like a, a one plate for lunch at like a Thai restaurant around here. It's only lunch on weekdays. And so if we were, our schedules really didn't match up for us to meet up on weekdays. Um, and if we did, I think we forgot or it was too late. Like I think it closes at like two or three, but we finally were able to check it out and oh my God, it was so delicious. So they had like pad thai and curry. I tried a bunch of stuff. It's, it's a cute little, like it's like one buffet, you know, little stand type of a thing. There's enough choice there for you, for you to be totally satisfied. They had the most delicious black rice pudding. To be fair, that was the first time I ever had like black rice pudding, but it was so good. Oh, just thinking about, I'm so hungry right now. <laughs> delicious tofu pad thai and I love tofu pad thai. Ah, oh, so good. 
I can't, I can't wait until like the next time we have like an afternoon of free time and we can go back and eat more pad thai and eat more Thai food. Ugh. So yeah, I believe it was called, I don't remember the name of the restaurant. No, that's not the name of the restaurant. I don't remember the name of the restaurant, so um, I will link that below. Like I said, it's in the U District and it was wonderful. If you guys are in Seattle and love vegan Thai food, you should check it out. One of my friends really likes mustard. We did this around Christmas time last year because a bunch of us had given him mustards as a Christmas gift. So recently, I, whenever now I see mustard that looks like a different type of flavor or variety, I grab it and I said, hey guys, I have three mustards. Do we wanna have another mustard party? And so we had a mustard party. So we had gotten the pale ale mustard from Trader Joe's, which is delicious. Um, I had also gotten a smoky mustard aioli, which I know is not a mustard, it's like a, it's an aioli, so it's mayonnaise, but it had that, you know, smoky mustard element, the mustard taste. So I let, everybody let that slide and it was pretty good. And I also brought a blue cheese mustard from Trader Joe's as well. So for the party, we picked up some more mustards at Trader Joe's. So we brought over some like crackers and cheese and some vegan hot dogs and tasted all the different mustards. We had some other mustards there to try, like this maple sage one that was really s spicy. <laughs> you know, clear the nostrils out. Um, a horseradish mustard, a, you know, your Dijon, your Grey Poupon, your ground. And then the best mustard is one that I got in the Target Christmas section last year. It was part of their whole like, like the workshop in the back of Target where they have like the different, uh, you know, trail mixes and cookies and, uh, you know, little sausage cheese plates or whatever. So they had this mustard. It is a, it's more of a, a honey than it is a mustard. It is a raspberry honey mustard. And it really has that like gelatinous, silky texture to it. Oh my God, it's just so purely delicious. And Christmas thankfully is coming around the corner and hopefully Target will be making more because I'm gonna pick up a, a couple jars. I don't think it's that expensive. I think it was like three bucks. And the most delicious mustard. I had forgotten about that mustard because it's been almost a year. <laughs> so we had really fun at this mustard party. Any any reason for friends to gather and eat some food is, is reason enough to have a mustard party. Uh, just as a quick also little plug, I went to uh, a little a little park in the southern Puget Sound area. Billy Frank Jr. Nisqually Park. I tried to check out the boardwalk here. Um, I'll link the video here if you're interested. It's really just about like exploring your, your neighborhood type of a thing, but just a cute little vlog that I made this year. So if that interests you, you can check the video up in the cards. Then I went to a concert. I went to the, I'm gonna, I'm gonna mispronounce this. El Corazon, El, El Corazon. It is a, it's a Seattle landmark. It's definitely a Seattle treasure landmark. Um, it is a performance hall. That's too fancy of a word. It's a venue, it's, it's a rock and roll venue. And it, you had like bands like in that golden age of grunge, you know, that the music style and era that Seattle's known for playing at this, this was kind of like a, I'm trying to think of the word and I can't think of it. Um, but it, it, like a pivotal venue that all of these like uh, grunge bands went and played at, like Nirvana, Pearl Jam, um, Soundgarden, Alice in Chains. Um, but all of these bands that everybody knows of from Grunge in Seattle all played at this venue and they're actually closing it down in the next couple months. I believe it was sold and they're demolishing it, which is kind of a shame because it was a really cool venue. So me and Brittany went because Brittany wanted to check out some local bands that she's been a fan of for like a decade. And so um, we really got to rock out and I, I'm really glad that I got to see this like tiny piece of Seattle history um, just briefly before it is demolished. Um, and I, it's one of those things again and where, I, and I touched this on my Nisqually video, that you pass something so often, you're like, I wanna go, I wanna go, I wanna go. And then when you finally go, it just feels like, yay, I finally am, got invited to go check out this venue um, in perfect timing. And that's what it was like every time I passed El Corazon. So that was really fun. I'm not sure when they're demolishing it. I'm not sure if any other people are playing. I, I have no idea. But the two bands that I saw really rocked out and it was, it was a fun night. I, I really enjoy live music and I don't go to it enough.
last little excursion for September was my New England Boston trip. So if you're interested in kind of watching and seeing that vlog, I will leave you to watch that up here. Um, and we'll go ahead and talk about some products. All right, so I'm gonna talk about some beauty products real quick. I have two cleansers that I've really been enjoying that I got in subscription boxes. They either came in BoxyCharm or in FabFitFun, I don't remember. That is the Tula Probiotic Skincare uh, Purifying Cleanser as well as the uh, Dr. Brandt, no relation, Biotic Balancing Complex Clean Biotic. So these are both like HP cleansers and I think I've really been enjoying um, that. <laughs> I'm almost done with both of these. I think these are probably gonna be finished up in the next uh, week or so. Um, and when I go traveling or on trips, I just squirt them into little bottles and they come with me. Um, but I really like this Tula one for night. It's a little heavy duty. Um, and then I like the way that it foams up after applying some water and it feels like a really good, nice, clean, it just feels like a cleanser. Um, and then I use this Dr. Brandt one uh, in the morning because I tend to apply a lot of things at night. And so I do do want to do a little bit lightly of a wash to try and get rid of any leftover sleeping mask or um, heavy moisturizers that I put on, put on before bed and if any like dirt or drool got in there. So uh, just a really light um, cleanse, but I've also used this at night um, after I've removed makeup and I've really been enjoying these too. Um, I'll be sad to see when they go. I do have more cleansers to try out, so I won't be repurchasing these anytime soon. Um, and I think if I were to repurchase one, I think I would really wanna go for the Dr. Brandt one. I love the way this smells and feels. It's a yogurt-based cleanser, so it's really creamy and hydrating. Um, I do think Dr. Brandt is expensive, so I'm not sure how much this one costs, um, but I won't be purchasing any cleansers until I finish my little stash that I've gotten for my subscription boxes. Last little mention of skincare, I have been loving this CeraVe moisturizing cream. I go through moisturizer like a mad woman. I have done high-end and low-end moisturizers. I always make sure to cleanse the face and moisturize the face as a minimum, and so I go through moisturizer. I really enjoy the size of this. Um, I have been using this for about the whole month, and I would say that I'm about a third of the way through the container, so I still have plenty of, of it to go through. I think I was just getting annoyed at dropping like, my favorite moisturizer that I was using before was an Olay one, and it was like 30 bucks, and I'd go through that throughout a month. I enjoyed a Neutrogena Hydrogel one, and that was close to $20. Um, and I just kind of was, you know, like annoyed at spending that type of money every month. And so this big hunk of chunk of CeraVe was $15. And I really think that this is going to last for several months. Um, it also has three essential ceramides in it. I've really been enjoying this. This is my night one. This one is a little too heavy to wear during the day. Um, so I do have a separate uh, daytime moisturizer that I'm trying to use up that has a little bit of SPF in it. It's not my favorite. I'm not in love with it. So it will be in need of a daytime, uh, daytime moisturizer. Really been enjoying this and I think this will be a repurchase if I am to run out of moisturizer. I've been trying to care about my hair a little bit more um, and especially in terms of trying to keep it healthy and moisturized that way I don't get split ends. I'm really trying to grow out my hair. My hair used to be very very long and then two years ago I told the, the hairstylist to, to chop off the dead stuff and then I had shoulder length hair and I was very upset. I'm trying to grow it out and so with that I'm trying to use more nourishing hair products or whatnot. So I've really been enjoying this Living Proof Moisturizing Styling Cream. I got this in a subscription box of mine. I, I'm not sure if it was BoxyCharm or FabFitFun, um, but I've really been enjoying this. I have several hair creams that I am trying to use up and this one is really the one that I will gravitate towards, um, especially if I'm like traveling. I really enjoy the size of this one, but it, it does help. I feel like my hair is straighter, not frizz as it's, you know, claiming on the bottle, it's anti-frizz. Um, and I feel like it has that moisture to come together and look polished. However, I do think Living Proof is an expensive brand, if I remember correctly. So I'm not sure if I'll be repurchasing this, but thankfully I still got about half of my little travel size tube left. So I'll be enjoying that. And then I have other hair creams to go through. But right now, this is the one I've been gravitating towards. Anywhere that I go, I bring my little bum bum cream because even right now my hands are dry. I can't, I can't deal with like having dry hands, especially after getting them wet and the drying process of losing the moisture from washing dishes, going swimming, showering, um, any type of 
you know, that pruniness that occurs afterwards. And so I always have my bum bum cream. And throughout August and September, there was a point where I ran out of bum bum cream and I didn't make it to the, I didn't make it to Sephora to get like a, a refill of my bum bum cream, which was also really expensive. So I found that I had, I had this Lovato cream. I think this is, this is a body lotion, but I've been using it on my hands. I like the way that it smells. It's a very summery scent of mandarin, orange, and bergamot. And this is very hydrating and I'm gonna apply some now because my hands are dry. Fast absorbing. And I think that's one of the major reasons that I really enjoy the Bum Bum Cream is it, of course smells delicious, but it adds a lot of moisture and evaporates really quickly because I also don't, I can't stand that like greasy, clumpy, wet, you know, slimy hand feeling. But this one had helped me through when I didn't have my bum bum cream and I've kept this kind of by my bed. Um, that way I don't have to get up if I need to feel like my hands are dry. I can just grab tape towards this one. And I do notice that the smell does linger throughout the day, so it does hang out a little bit. And yeah, I've been enjoying this. I again, got this in a subscription box. So it is fall, so that means it is pumpkin season and pumpkin candle seasons, fall candles, love candles. Um, I told myself in August that you can't buy any pumpkin spice candles and then I did anyway and I burnt, I burnt through one. <laughs> um, but I told myself you can't go to Bath and Body Works until it's true fall season and then you can look through their candles. And I went a couple times throughout September and I just felt like their candles were so expensive and not really scents that I really enjoyed. When I went, they weren't having their, their sale. So I think the cheapest that I saw for the sale was to get um, a candle for like $14 because I think it was $10 off the normal $24, $25 candle. And it's, it's especially for a scent that I wasn't really raved about. There were a couple, if they had a good deal, I would have picked up a couple that I enjoyed, but to spend $15 on a candle that I wasn't like losing my mind about uh, really wasn't doing it for me. So I'm also not the biggest fan of their pumpkin spice candle. Um, and I will say that my favorite pumpkin spice candle is the one actually from Walmart. I think this one is the most delicious like pumpkin spice candle. I There's a scent, let me just see if I can like channel my inner like, it's like a connoisseur for like smells, like a sommelier of candles, a, com a canmolier, a camolier. Sounds delicious. The reason I like this one and not a lot, I feel like a lot of other pumpkin spice candles have a certain scent to them that I don't enjoy. And I'm going to try and describe that to you. This is a really warm smelling candle and I think it's heavily noted with cinnamon. Whereas some of these other pumpkin spice ones are sharp. They're very like aggressive and tart and sharp in their scent. And I'm not sure if they're having, if they're leaning more towards like a nutmeg scent or a true pumpkin scent because pumpkin spice doesn't have any pumpkin in it. Um, but maybe certain pumpkin candles do, like if, if you smell like a pumpkin harvest candle. So that is gonna smell like straight up your sniffing, sniffing an old gourd, you know? Where I think this is like, this really, I think it, it leans in the cinnamon. And I think that's why I enjoy it. Um, I wish I had a Bath and Body Works to compare it to. So I have here, <laughs> I have here the Sweet Cinnamon Pumpkin Mist Fragrance and I'm about, well, I guess I'm not that far down with it. Oh, I'm about halfway through with this guy and I've been using this a lot. Let me smell and see if I can identify the scent difference for y'all. I'm not sure if it's because it's a fragrance and it has a more alcohol scent because it's a fragrance. I, I just, Sharp, that's the word that comes to mind when I smell like a, a pumpkin spice candle that I don't like is sharp. Um, which I know is not a scent, it's a feeling. So I've already gone through two, at least one of these pumpkin candles. And this one is five bucks and it's huge. And I think the scent is tremendously better than the Bath and Body Works one. So I normally pick up my candles either at Walmart or um, I got one from Target, um, but that one really didn't, that one really didn't waft a scent in the air, just kind of burned and 
wasn't like the most crazy of smelling where this guy will fill up a room like I tell you oh, it's so good so I normally pick up my candles I'll, I'll get I'll get a couple from Walmart or from like TJ Maxx it's usually where I get them I think that's where this boy came from and the ones in my kitchen and so I, I imagine October will have a lot more candles to go through because right now I've just been focusing on finishing up some pumpkin guys I think that's all of the products so right now we're gonna head into media So I listen to a lot of podcasts, whether if I'm driving somewhere or doing things around the house, like I constantly am listening to podcasts. So I have four podcasts that I have been really enjoying throughout the month of September. Most of the podcasts that I do listen to are true crime, so I'll go ahead and buzz through those really quickly. The first one is from Over My Dead Body, their second season came out. Their first season was about a shooting, a shooting for hire in Florida, and now this season is all about Joe Exotic, which um, I heard about Joe Exotic for a little bit because uh, last podcast on the left, in their side stories, they had talked about it. That's their section where they talk about like things going on in the news or whatnot. And they had mentioned him a couple times. Um, he's this dude that like had this poorly run zoo with like exotic cats and there was a lady that was trying to shut him down for animal cruelty and he tried to like put a hit on her and all of this just kind of like wacky stuff that occurred. I think it's a shorter series. I think it was like six episodes. I just finished like a 40 minute call with my dad. <laughs> um, so I'm not sure. Oh, I was talking about podcasts. And also the lighting may have changed because it is starting to get kind of darky and stormy outside. So um, we're almost done here. So Joe Exotic is kind of like a like a kooky uh, story about just a very crazy and eccentric man. So if that interests you, um, I also thought that the um, first season of Over My Dead Body was enjoyable. The other one that I actually listened to all like a day or so ago, because it was only six episodes again, was one by Dateline. It was the thing about Pam. And this is a story following the murder of a friend of Pan Hup. I had briefly heard about this story in a Generation Y episode and then this series covered really kind of went more in deep with the story that occurred. A wife is found murdered and then the husband is jailed and found guilty for this murder um, and you find out that there's some other twisty turny things and interesting enough I normally don't really like when the reporters kind of self insert themselves. I think it becomes a little too like What's like the polite way to say it? Like, oh, self-aggrandizing. Um, like I've heard podcasts where they're like, I've never done a true crime podcast before and now I'm walking up to a suspected killer's door or I'm gonna break this case, you know? I'm like, I don't like any of that stuff. Tell me the facts. I think a reporter or like a presenter in podcasts, the, the form or style that I like is, very just kind of guiding the story along, not like driving it and like trying to like boost their own ego. Um, but with this one, there was an interesting kind of element of the reporter and the producer dealing with some of the people in the case that actually made it really interesting and kind of a, a more intimate perspective, you know? So that was fun. And I really liked the presenter's voice. I think he does like other Dateline episodes. I don't remember his name. His voice was very like low and deep, but a little bit like comical and questioning, like not as serious as some of the other podcasts that I listen to, which also is something I don't normally like. Um, so that's Dateline's All About Pam. Another podcast I've been listening to is um, Patient Zero. This is a, it's actually by the New Hampshire, uh, what's it, New Hampshire newspaper? I believe it's the same people that did the podcast Bear Brook, which is such a fascinating mystery case, um, also very tragic. And this was all about Lyme disease and talking about like the history of Lyme disease, the people that were those affected by Lyme disease and trying to legitimize Lyme disease and the symptoms and just how you have to have, find doctors that are pro Lyme disease and most doctors say that it's not. I didn't find it terribly biased, but I also think that's because I am not, I am not like one way or the other. I'm kind of like in a middle ground when it comes to like my idea of Lyme disease. Um, I think that there is a lot of, I think in the next like 20 to 50 years, we'll know a lot more about what's going on with the people that are 
having these certain symptoms that have Lyme, that don't have Lyme, and I think we'll have a better understanding of it in the future. Um, but right now we're just kind of at that point of medical history of like testing it and understanding it and hunting for like the information. But the history side of it was very fascinating following around the woman who was who took very methodical notes about her children, her son that she believed had Lyme disease. Um, very interesting, I think, learning about diseases or medicine or how what's going on in like the medical world is like fascinating and important. Last podcast I have been enjoying um, has been has been a musical podcast. This is called Song vs. Song. Um, it's by a YouTuber that I've been following for a while called Todd in the Shadows. He's a music reviewer and he talks about like pop hits, but also one hit wonders. Um, again, really interesting like history and information in terms of the artist, the culture, the genre, new stuff that comes around with the music. Very wonderful channel. And Song vs. Song is him and his friend talk about two different songs and talk about which song they found was is better, more enjoyable, um, and then they they do a Twitter poll and they talk about which one the crowd like agreed with, and they talk about like you know their opinions on the song, um, as well as talking about certain elements of like the artist or the genre or just talking about music and. Um, it's nice to have a, a break from the true crime podcast. I just find it difficult to find podcasts that I like that aren't true crime based. I think right now I have like a, like two or three medical ones. Um, a podcast that I had been listening to, Coffee with Rachel, just ended this month. And they were two Seattle people just talking about like their day-to-day -day life. And it's very difficult for me to find like a two people talking podcast that I really enjoy. So I was kind of bummed that was ending, but I think it's for the best for them. So yeah, most of the stuff that I listen to is true crime. Crime. I just remembered another podcast that I really was enjoying. I listened to it on the flight uh, to and from Boston, and that is the podcast Doe. And I really, really, really want them to to keep going. And uh, because this is a topic that I was very, very fascinated by, um, I for many years thought about making a podcast like this. And so I'm glad somebody actually did. And I really enjoy their banter. It's all about Jane Doe's and John Doe, so unidentified remains. And they talk about two cases, and then one case that of a person that was identified um, since we are in this age of like genealogy and familial DNA being able to identify people I think we're gonna be seeing a lot of these Jane and John Doe's being identified um, but I think the whole idea of these unidentified remains and trying to figure out who these are is so tragic like a true mystery you know and then it, that scratch that scratches that like morbid curiosity that I have. I really hope they come out with an episode like once a month and I really hope they keep at it. I've really been enjoying it. Uh, much praise to that. Okay, so that's gonna be it for my September favorites. Uh, let me know what you guys thought of this video if you're excited, if you'd like to see more stuff like this where I'm just talking about things that I'm liking. Like I said, I love favorites videos, so I want to make favorites videos and share some stuff that I've really been loving during the month and um, let me know some things that you've been enjoying throughout the month of September, whether that be candles, skincare, restaurants, podcasts, let me know. Let's have a discussion down below. So I want to say thank you guys so much for watching. Happy travels from me to you and get home safely. Bye guys.